Hello Zimbabwe, welcome to Farming 263. My name is Wadi Chonzoka and today we are here in Vainona where we are going to meet Mr. Keith who is an urban farmer. As you can see, we are in the heart of the suburb, so it can be done anywhere. So now we go and meet Mr. Keith. Hello Mr. Keith, my name is Wadi Chonzoka from Farming 263. Uh -huh. Would you mind introducing Good. yourself to our viewers? No. Hi. How are you? Uh, my name is Keith Chipudla and welcome to Vital Grow Urban Farms. Mr. Keith, I'm seeing a lot of interesting structures around here. Would you mind explaining to us what this is? Okay, so uh, here at Vital Grow uh, Urban Farms, we practice uh, hydroponic greenhouse farming. And as you can see, all these structures are greenhouses. So we've got a couple of greenhouses here uh, on this site and I'll be happy to show you around. Ah, nice. Uh, before you show us around, would you mind uh, do a background check? Uh, did you start as a farmer or? Uh, so yeah, maybe we start at the beginning. So my name again is Keith Chipudla. I'm a 30-year-old Zimbabwean. Uh, how my journey started was uh, after high school, I went to university in China. I did my degree and my schooling there. Then when I finished, I came back to Zimbabwe. Uh, my degree was actually uh, in accounting and finance. Ah, but uh, when I came back to Zimbabwe, I was finding it hard to, to find employment. Oh. So I decided to, I came across greenhouse farming from a friend who recommended it for me to me and then uh, I had a little bit of savings so I started my first greenhouse uh, in Westgate right. and then from then on I saw that greenhouse farming is actually a very profitable thing and it's also enlightening to feed the nation and help the country's economy so from then on I fell in love with farming and then I came across hydroponics farming which is a uh, a better method of farming in my view uh -huh. and then from then on Vita Grow just grew to be what it is today. Oh, oh. This is actually interesting from being a accountant mm -hmm. to being a farmer. Oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So we would like, uh, like you to show us what really inspired you inside the greenhouse of course what you go through of, uh, for what you are doing exactly. Alright sure. This is a quite interesting place you've got here. Yeah. Mm, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me just give you a tour of yeah. everything that we're doing here. Yeah. We love to do that. Great. It looks like we're here. Yes uh, we are here now. Uh, so on the site we've got four greenhouses here. Yeah. So let me show you our first greenhouse which is the lettuce greenhouse. So oh, this greenhouse is come. only lettuce. Okay. So please come in and let me show you. So the first thing that we do here at Vitagro is we adhere to strict biosecurity measures. Right? So we've got the first thing that people have to do is read these signs. So for example, your hands, hair nets uh, for you know, disinfection and use gloves when handling crops. Yes, exactly. And then please, uh, if you could just step in our footpath to make sure that no diseases that you might have stepped on somewhere when you're on your way. And then here we are. Uh, true, please come in. Uh, let me show you. Uh, so here at Vitagro, we make sure that uh, everyone has to be wearing gloves for when you're gonna get in, and also yes, and also a hair net so that you can cover your hair. So let me also just get some gloves. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nid. So okay so i can see a lot uh yeah it's a lot of lettuce right yes That's so as i as i mentioned this is uh our lettuce greenhouse okay. so if you could uh right so let me just run you through yeah sure of course so, i don't have any idea of what's going on in here you've never seen something like this right nice. Okay, so over here we practice what we call hydroponic farming. Hydroponics. Huh? So yes, so at Vita Grow, it's a fully hydroponic farming company. And then what hydroponics is in a nutshell is it's soilless farming. So we do not use any soil for our crops, as yeah, you can see. Yeah, I can see that. Yes, there's no soil. Okay. So if you can even see like this, yeah, no it's soil. just water. Yeah. So it's only water running through our system and feeding our crops. Okay, before you take us further, uh, what is hydroponics? Uh, okay, so hydroponics is a soilless method of farming. So usually when you're growing crops, you have to put them in the soil. Yeah. But as you can see, here with hydroponics, we're actually growing them in food grade PVC pipes. Okay. So that means that there is no soil really? for our crops. Okay. Let me just give you, let me just show you right now. Oh, yes. So as you can see, yes, yes, yes. these yeah. are just roots. That's and there's no soil so the roots are just uh, feeding the water okay. uh, from the water and the nutrition and 
Zero soil used. Yeah, I can see that. Ah, I didn't know something like this is actually happening yeah, it's, in Zimbabwe. It's very possible. So ah. you can even remove it and then you can put it back with no harm to the plant and then it will just carry on growing. Very innovative. Thank you very much. Thank sure. you. Uh -huh. So this system is called an NFT system. NFT? Which, yes, that stands for Nutrient Film Technique. Oh. So that means it's a thin film of water that's running through the roots uh -huh. and then that's how the crops get uh, the nutrition. Okay. So, judging by the sound, I hear there are some waterfalls somewhere, somewhere. Could you mind explaining what it is exactly? Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, with hydroponics, what it really is, is uh, we give our nutrients to, to the crops through water. Oh. So, instead of through the soil, uh -huh. we put the nutrients in the water, the water and then the water circulates and uh, feeds the roots and then the crops grow. Oh. So, let me just show you where it starts. Yeah, sure. So, here's our reservoir. Ah, ah, so, this ah, we call it our nutrient reservoir. Ah. This is where our water will be and all our nutrients will be. Right. So in here there's a pump and then the pump pumps the water up through into there into these channels uh -huh. and then the water goes and then recirculates back oh, through so these it's a circulative system. Yes, definitely. Oh. It's a closed loop system, that's what they call it. Okay. And that ensures that we save water obviously. So you mentioned about nutrients. How do you manage them since all I can see is just water in here? Great, great. that's a good question. Uh -huh. So what we do is uh, we have uh, our meters, right? So like this one for example. Uh -huh. This is called an EC and pH meter. So what this uh -huh. does is uh, it actually measures how much nutrients are dissolved in the water. Okay. So we use what's called electric conductivity. Yeah, conductivity. So electric yeah. conductivity obviously uh -huh. just means uh, the number of salts that are dissolved in water. Mm, so scientific it, stuff here. Uh, okay. Not really, not really. So every day we uh, we check the mm. nutrients that have been used by the crop okay. and then we refill them as the crops are taking them up okay and so also another big issue there is the pH mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for crops to take up nutrients in yeah. any system the pH has to be of a certain level okay. so for example for lettuce uh -huh. the optimum pH to take up nutrients is 5.5 to 6.5 so right. we make sure that every day the pH is between 5.5 to 6.5 so how do you make sure to maintain the pH so we've got solutions uh, pH down solutions or pH up solutions oh. that we can put in there to control the pH to make sure it's within the range that we want. Okay, so yeah. about the nutrients, do you have some benchmarks that you do it or? Yes, uh, so for EC, mm. uh, we've got benchmarks like for example for lettuce, uh -huh. the optimum EC would be, you know, a certain benchmark. Mm. So we just have to make sure that, you know, it's always on that yeah. benchmark. So every day as the crops take, uh, take up the nutrients, uh -huh. the EC goes down yeah, and course. then we come in the morning, then we refill and oh. then it goes back to where it's supposed to be. Okay, so you maintain it on a daily basis, like once a day? Uh, we actually do it three times a day. Ah. So we make sure that our crops always have exactly what they have at every specific time that they are. Mm, efficient, oh, so thank efficient. You, thank that's you. nice. Thank you. Okay, so after this system now, what do we have? Okay, so let me just uh, this closed. Uh -huh. All right, so come with me. So these systems are, as you can see, these nice systems, they're, they're, we bought them in South Africa. Oh. Right, so one of the challenges of hydroponics mm -hmm. is the cost of setup. Uh -huh. Right, so as you can see, these ones are really nice, uh -huh. but we imported them from South Africa. You mean the system? The systems, yes, the pipes, uh -huh. everything, it's imported from South Africa. Okay. Uh -huh. So what we are doing here at VitaGrow is we are trying to, uh, we're actually replicating the systems uh -huh. using locally sourced material oh, yeah, that sure, you can sure. find here in Zimbabwe. Uh, to, so, to minimize the cost. Yes, to make yeah. it cheaper uh -huh. and also just make it more efficient. Because uh -huh. oh, yeah. sometimes, you know, when you buy something, you can find that it has some flaws in it. Uh -huh. And then when you make your own system or custom you try, it, you try and address uh, okay. these flaws okay so you can come and see this is another system that we have created here uh, oh, in Zimbabwe so that's being innovative yeah so this one is a stacked system uh -huh. so obviously as you can see it saves space yeah of course that's the you know that's the big benefit also it goes up in stacks like this right so this one currently uh, it has 380 uh -huh. uh, heads of lettuce 380 on yes such a small just area. in a small area this is three meters by one and a half meters and okay. it can have such uh so you can even keep going up okay and this guy's the limit <laughs> yes exactly exactly okay. so the benefit uh -huh. of this is we made it using local we designed and made it using locally sourced materials uh -huh. in zimbabwe so obviously it's going to be cheaper yeah, uh, when you can just go buy the pipes uh -huh. in various places and then do the welding uh -huh. and then it works so it's still soilless as well yes it's still soilless soilless so for so in there if you can see there's actually some you know uh soil looking like media but oh, yeah, it's actually course, course. not media uh -huh. so this is called pine bark pine bark yes so uh -huh. pine bark is just uh 
you know the bark of trees and then they crush them and then they process them okay. so that because for us we don't use soil okay. right why we don't use soil yeah. is there's a lot of diseases in the soil mm -hmm. right number one right so with this it's disinfected and it's inert oh, so it does okay. not give us any nutrition whatsoever which means we can control the diseases so oh. we do not need to spray you know all those fungicides that yeah, normal soil-based yes. farmers spray uh -huh. so yeah we use things like pine bark uh -huh. cocoa peat vermiculite to make sure that our crops, the root system of the uh -huh. crops is held together. So this is actually also a enclosed circulation system? Yes, as well? let me show you, you can come around here. Uh -huh. So as you can see this one uh -huh. is also a closed loop. So again here's our okay. reservoir uh -huh. for our water sure. and then once you switch it on the water goes in and then it comes back. Okay. This is oh, the return pipe. Oh the return pipe? Yeah, so and then there's the filter there, things like that, just um, to make sure that okay. the dirt. Uh -huh. So all our systems are closed loop systems and they recirculate. Oh so so there is another system here. Yeah? Mm. So this is our new system. We are currently in the middle of designing it and finishing it up. But as you can see, it's also a tiered system. Yeah, so it's obviously going to save space. Uh -huh. And then, you know, uh, that's the second version from that first version that we did. All so right. here at VitaGrow, we're always trying to innovate yeah, we're always trying to make sure we save space mm -hmm. you know make urban farming a bit more uh sustainable yeah of course, yes, of course, yes. of course because we have limited space so mm. that means this system is an upgrade of this one since now there's something vertical going yes upwards. yes yes okay. we actually want to practice vertical farming okay as well yes okay, okay. more population mm. less space mm. yes oh, nice mm. okay so now uh let's like know about how you do your seeds your varieties and all those stuff uh, until you you get to the stage okay mm -hmm. so we've got a whole process here at Vitagro that we do uh we start from seeds uh -huh. we actually plant our own seeds we okay. don't buy seedlings uh -huh. from uh, seed houses why we do that uh -huh. is uh, when you plant your own seed you can actually control okay. the whole life cycle of the seed uh -huh. so things like diseases mismanagement pests and stuff you can actually make sure that you avoid all of that by okay. doing your own so we actually seed from seed and then we transplant them into the system uh -huh. then from the system we harvest them and then take them to wherever it is we're supplying okay how about uh, the varieties i can see different colors this is what so uh, here it's only fancy lettuce okay. right uh -huh. so we grow uh, red and green fancy lettuce uh -huh. and uh, various butterhead lettuce spotted lettuce and different types okay. so we grow according to our customers our customer base oh. so basically they tell us what they want to like we supply Re, uh, various restaurants around Harare as well okay. so they tell us what they want uh -huh. and then we actually yeah. grow for them so this is the red lettuce red fancy lettuce uh -huh. and then the green fancy lettuce so it's usually used as a mix in a oh, salad okay. so you take some of the red some of the green mix it up yeah, and then more yeah then you make it a bit more you know add some art to it yes yes i can see this it's looks like it's sticky or some more it? oh so these are traps uh -huh. so these are sticky traps so we put them here in the greenhouse to catch pests oh, so yeah, because see yes as you can see some yeah. of the pests there uh -huh. okay. so the yellow actually attracts the pests uh -huh. and obviously it's a sticky thing and oh, then when the pests come they get attracted on and then it it helps us so in here because we don't spray any pesticides you don't spray any pesticides so no we actually clean. uh they're so clean because they're in a closed environment oh, okay. so we try to make sure like you saw those measures we're using uh -huh. at the door the biosecurity yeah, yeah. so we try to make sure that we have uh, as less people in here as possible for contamination and also pests since it's closed up like this and then use these traps that means we do not need to spray pesticides so that's another advantage of uh, hydroponic farming that i think is uh, very beneficial <laughs> it is it is thank you thank you uh, so it's so hot in here. Doesn't it affect our plants here? Uh, yes. So there's uh, there's two sides to it. It's a very uh, good question that you ask. So uh, with crops, right? Uh, the hotter it is, it means the more water that they drink. It's like you when you're hot, you drink more water, right? Okay. So because we've got a recirculating system and we're always circulating the water, uh -huh. that means our plants are forced to feed more. Oh. Right, so when they drink water, they're actually feeding more, which means they grow faster uh -huh. and healthier because they're actually feeding more than the normal uh, crops oh. in the shade. So it's actually a benefit to have it so hot and humid like this. Oh, okay, okay, yes, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. All right, great, great. All right, so let me show you to our other greenhouses. Yeah. Uh, it was nice having you here. Let's just come out and yes. thank you. Let's just close the, the door. So our doors are always closed, as you saw. 
to security purposes. Security and biosecurity. All right. All so right. obviously we don't want any pests uh, coming into here. Mm -hmm. Plus also at night, obviously you don't want any people just uh, coming in here. All right. Uh, thank you. Okay. All right. So welcome to our cucumber greenhouse. In this wow. greenhouse, we do English cucumbers. English cucumber. So wow. this system is also a closed loop system. Uh -huh. And it's uh, another system that we uh, constructed using locally sourced material. So as you can see, uh, our guys are actually harvesting oh, in here right now. Time, huh? Yeah, so we just make sure we don't disturb them. But oh, let me just show you how the system goes. Yeah, sure. Right, so here we've got buckets, right? Uh -huh. If you can see, these are the buckets that we actually grow the crops in. Yeah. Right, so if I can show you, you're asking about soil. Right. Of course, of course. So this is not soil, as you can see. This oh, is that pine, pine bark. bark yes, about. so it's a mix of pine bark, cocoa peat, vermiculite. Okay. So this is inert and does not give any sort of nutrition to our crops. Okay. So how the system works is we've got feeder pipes that feed into the bucket and then it overflows and then it goes back to the tank. Ah, so okay. as you can see, our crops are very healthy. Of and they because they're always getting exactly what they need every day, as we mentioned. And another big part of uh, of who we are here at Try to Grow is we've got a we've got three three pillars that we operate on. So that's accessibility, affordability, and uh, and flavor, right? So in terms of the whole, uh, we actually work with uh, traceability as one of our core business models right, all right yes. so what we do mm -hmm. is you see all these buckets are uh, labeled yeah right course. each plant site is labeled and when we do picking mm -hmm. and you know harvesting everything like that mm -hmm. we actually record as you see is recording in a book mm -hmm. right we actually record how many fruits we've gotten for each plant mm -hmm. uh, you know if there's any diseases or anything that happens we actually record for each individual plant right. yeah. so that we even when it goes to the shop we can actually track mm -hmm. let's say there's any problems with the mm -hmm. crop we can actually track which bucket what that crop that? in the shop came oh, from okay. yeah, so we use batch numbers lot numbers to actually okay. track these are the numbers then those are the numbers so this ensures that if there's any complaints or any outbreaks or any diseases or something like that in the market mm -hmm. we can actually come back and trace what happened to that crop and we can actually tell you what we gave to each individual crop throughout the season ah. from beginning to to harvest from ah. seed to shop basically okay. Okay. okay so yes this is that's the that greenhouse of ours. Okay. So let me, let me show you real quick some of our pickings, as you can see. Uh, because of the way we grow, we're actually able to grow very big and very healthy yeah. cucumbers, as you can see. English cucumbers. Yes, as you can see, this is above market average. Yeah, of course. <laughs> market of course, size. Yeah. And they're actually quite nice. I'll give you yeah. some to taste later yeah, of course. on. Ah, thank you. <laughs> no problem. You can see, uh, they're actually harvesting. So let's just go to another greenhouse so that we can... Oh, you're actually helping with the wow, harvest now. <laughs> great, great. So, all right, so let's not disturb them too much. Let me go show you another greenhouse of ours where yeah, there's no one. All right, thank you. All right, so, okay, so this is our third greenhouse here. We've also got English cucumbers in here. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, we, we like our English cucumbers. Of course, of course. Ah, oh, okay, only quick notes. Okay. From the previous greenhouse, there were buckets, and now I see plastics. Right, so this is a different design. Like I mentioned, we actually, uh, we try to be as innovative as we can and we try to uh, test many different uh, uh, systems to see which ones are the best, especially in Zimbabwe, which ones are the most affordable and which ones are actually, you know, the best that can get the job done. So in here, it's the same sort of system. It's a closed loop system, but instead of using buckets, we're actually using bags. So you see, these are actually grow bags and then they've actually got, uh, the they're same grow bags. yes grow bags ah. so they actually have the same media and then the water just runs up and returns yeah, just like the other ones yeah then it collects in these return pipes oh so that means the bag is porous from beneath yes it's porous uh, ah. underneath okay. so yeah this is a uh, other greenhouse same same sort of system as the last one but same, uh, variety. same variety we've got a couple of varieties actually uh -huh. of cucumbers that we are testing mm -hmm. so that one greenhouse has one variety and mm -hmm. this one has one variety ah. so again we've named all our uh, we've numbered all our buckets mm -hmm. and at the end of the season we'll be able to tell which variety works best in which conditions so that for the future of the company we know which varieties to grow consistently and which ones give us uh, a consistent yield okay yeah i'm sure with the 
for, for your core values, innovation is one of them. Yes, it? it's, a, ah. it's, a, it's one of the biggest values that we pride ourselves in, in Vita Group. Oh, okay, yes. interesting. Yeah. All right, so. so welcome to our third and final greenhouse okay. here at Rhinona. So same thing, please just uh, dip your feet in All right. and then come in, please. Ah, oh, okay, some new setup in here. Yeah, so this is a new setup that we have in here. So in here we've got uh, hydro, they're called hydro bases. Hydro right? bases? Yes, hydroponic bases. So as you can see, we've actually got a uh, little wonder, which is cherry tomatoes. So oh. we're actually doing cherry tomatoes in these ones, right? So this is the same system, uh, the tanks are outside the reservoirs. Right. And then again, as you can see, this one actually has bigger particles. This yeah, is called yeah, yeah. cocoa peat. That's cocoa peat. Yes, so it's a mixture. We use different uh, different grow media to try yeah. find the right one for us again. Again, okay. we're also always experimenting to try find the, you know, the right fit. So it's the same thing here. The nutrients are pumped in there. It's uh, it collects at the bottom yeah. and then it recirculates as well. Okay, so I see this white balls. So this is another different system of hydroponics that we're actually just constructing right now. Uh -huh. So this one is called deep water culture. <laughs> Water yes, deep water culture. Yeah, so nice. for this one, it means that uh, have you ever seen like when crops grow in water, right? So what you do is you put the leafy greens uh, specifically, like lettuce, herbs. Uh, then you put them. You make holes in here, and then there'll be water in here. So you see, as you can see, it's gonna have water in here, and that water will have our nutrients and pH. Then the roots of the crops actually just uh, dipping in there, then the oh, crops so will this grow. One will be floating. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then the crops, the roots will be dipping in there. The waters will be also circulating. No, this one is a non circulating system. Okay. So this one is a stagnant system. And then, okay. yeah, it's just the same hydroponics, but it's just that it doesn't circulate. So is it advantageous over the other one, or you are still here to experiment about that? So each one. Uh, each system has its own benefits and yeah. disadvantages, yeah, right? So, for example, uh, with recirculating systems, you need electricity or you need uh, pumps to make sure that it's always working. Mm -hmm. But with this type of system, it's a stagnant system, so it's, it uses less water, so it's a cheaper alternative. Oh, right. But also, you're going to need to aerate your water to make sure that oxygen gets to the roots. So, you know, certain crops grow better uh -huh. in the GWC than the NFT and then certain grow in the NFT than the DWC. So it's always a trade-off. So here what we do is we actually have a list uh, through our experiments over the years, we actually have a list of crops that grow better in each system. Oh, uh, because of various reasons yeah. like aeration, you know, too much water. Uh -huh. Like for example, in there you can't grow balding crops, yeah, of course. like onions and stuff because uh -huh. they'll rot. So oh, we need to do them, uh, yes, because it's too much water. Uh, so yeah, it's all about research and development, okay. and that enables us to make systems that actually give the best results. There's something in here. Uh, yes, we actually uh, we planted in these bags, as you can see. Uh -huh. So if you can see here, here's our little plants coming out now. Oh, of course. So in about three to four weeks, they'll actually be ready for harvest, and then we'll have big plants here. In three to four weeks. Yes, they'll be ready for harvest. Yes, they will be. Nice, nice. nice. So, Even system more. Huh? Ah, no, it's just the way, you know, giving it proper nutrition wow. and proper care means that we actually, you know, we get faster harvests. Okay, so you are approaching <laughs> Well, yeah, this is another system that we, uh, we have designed and worked on. So in this system, like I explained before, it's for the bulbing crops. Oh. So this is a raised bed. So again, this is actually grow media and no soil whatsoever. And it's also a recirculating system. The tank is outside and these misters will actually mist and show uh, and irrigate there. So in here we do various uh, different crops like, you know, as you can see, we've got chives, watercress, baby spinach, radish, uh, onions, basil, and then, yeah, different other herbs, coriander, mint, sage, parsley. Yeah, okay. so that's what we do in these grow beds, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you do your, your mist irrigation, so this means the surface is slightly... Small, yes, it's so actually it's slanted so that there's a runoff there. So all the water goes out and collects from outside there. Okay, so you also do that EC thing... Uh, yes, for the tank outside. All our systems we do, we control EC and pH for all our systems. Okay, okay so managing all this, mm. do you have someone who helps you or you do to... Uh, so we actually have a team here uh -huh. of growers here at Fire to Grow. Currently, we employ about uh, eight people eight, uh -huh. that we actually you work with uh, and as you can see here's another guy who's been with us so oh, hello how are you i'm good thanks uh you are my name is nathan Murata, and i'm the research and development specialist here okay yeah uh, 
I can see some stuff here that I don't really understand. I'm sure you're the one who can shed lace for us. Oh yes, yeah, so this is our grow bed. Actually, we're actually pioneering a technique here using grow bed with uh, the hydroponic system. It's never been done on this scale before. Okay. So my job is to analyze it and uh -huh. see how crops are doing. In it. Okay. And so right now I was counting, you know, how many are germinating, how many are doing well, if any are struggling in the system. Yeah. It's also for us to find out which crops work best because we have a variety. We have some bulbing crops, we have some leafies mm -hmm. as well, we have herbs as well. So we're trying to find out what works best in this particular system. But in general, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to see if our systems are operating optimally. And if they're not, to find out how we can make them operate optimally. Ah, the tech guy. Ah, this is really interesting. Essentially. Okay, so uh, our viewers, uh, this has been our vital visit. I'm sure you've been well enlightened about urban farming where we are here with hydroponics, guys. This is some stuff which are not basic, but it's being done here. Uh, in Vinona, so stay tuned. Well, welcome to our pack house. This is where we do all our packing and wrapping of uh, our various crops like cucumbers, uh, lettuce, herbs. As you can see, we've got our guy here, Brighton. He's wrapping cucumbers that we just picked just now in the greenhouse. Oh, it's more like a value addition kind of thing. Yes, it's like a whole process from planting to harvesting to wrapping to the shop. You see, uh, we've got our storage, uh, our freezers to store crops before we take them to market. Oh. Here's some of our wrapped cucumbers. Let me show you. So what it does is it, it ensures that our crops will stay fresh for market. As you can see, they've been wrapped and they've been there. So when we do deliver them, it means that they'll be fresh and not wilted. Oh. Yes, so this is the place. Do you also do some branding? Yes, we actually brand most of our uh, produce. Like ah. for example, here's some uh, fancy latest packaging that we've got. Yeah. So these we take to supermarkets like Bon Marche mm -hmm. and our customers really love them. Okay, okay, okay. So it's really level of vital growth, spring, right? So, yes, yes. Growth, so that the consumers really know what they are, okay? Mm, so nice. that they understand exactly what they're consuming. Grown with passion and care in Zimbabwe, this is nice. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, thank you. So, guys, we have learned a lot from our farmer, Mr. Kit, from seed production up to packaging. So, if you are in need of their products, uh, there's uh, Angels, my vital growth. Uh, their Instagram is also my vital growth and then there's their contact number as well as their email and if you are in need of their products again you can check them out in supermarkets like Bon Marche they supply them okay and TM I'm sure so you can get them wherever supermarket you need. Oh, Mr. Kit, as we wrap up our program, uh, why hydroponics? Uh, okay, that's a very good question. Uh, so why hydroponics? Uh, hydroponics farming uh, compared to soilless farming has many different benefits, we believe, right? Yeah, so yeah. the first benefit, obviously, we save water mm -hmm. because our water is recirculating always. Yeah. So we save about 90% of water compared 90. to soil-based farming, oh. yes, because it's actually recirculating, right? Another big thing of uh, hydroponics is saving space. Yeah. So right now, like you saw, we're in the urban area yeah. and in urban areas, there's not as much space as in rural areas, yeah, but we can actually have a working site mm -hmm. in the heart of Harare where most people would not be able to make a living for themselves or actually do an operation of this size. Yeah. So that's another benefit, especially for young farmers without too much land, yeah, you can actually you know, you can actually do farming in your backyard, for example, yeah, yeah. and actually make a living for yourself, yeah. right? Uh, another big thing about hydroponics is uh, it's, more, it's a more sustainable way of farming. Yeah. So we at VitaGrow, we really believe in saving the earth and preserving the soil. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, if you always plant the same thing in the same soil, you end yeah. up degrading uh, the nutrients or the nutrition in the soil. So for us, we actually use zero soil. So we are preserving the earth and that's a very big part of why we do what we do. Uh -huh. And then uh, the last part that I'd like to speak about is the health of our crops. Yeah, of course. Right, so because we use zero pesticide in our grow processes, oh. that means that there's no uh, residue, harmful residue in our crops yeah. for our customers when they, uh, when they consume it. Uh -huh. And that will help them live longer and yeah. a healthier life. <laughs> so it's all about a life of vitality, uh -huh. which is why we are Vita Grow. Yeah. Right, so that's... Yeah, basically those are our main uh, pillars of uh, Vitagrow and why we actually practice hydroponic farming. Okay, okay. So as a company, what challenges have you faced so far? Uh, so as a company, obviously, uh, the main challenge that we have faced, I would say it's, uh, it's funding. Uh -huh. At the beginning, okay. obviously, uh, the cost of uh, setup for hydroponic systems yeah, yeah, is yeah, quite high. Yeah. 
Uh, so when you are actually, uh, the day-to-day -day costs and expenses are cheaper than in the soil, but the initial setup is quite expensive. So obviously, we don't have unlimited funding uh, to actually, you know, set up a huge, huge site. So what we do, or how we're trying to sort that out, as I mentioned before, is to actually design locally sourced systems. So and make them cheaper for us to be able to produce on a wider scale. Oh. So one of the things that we're also doing is we're offering training programs oh. for young farmers or any farmers really who are interested in hydroponics. They can come and we can train them. And also we are now building systems for people that we will sell. So if you are interested in hydroponics, for example, you can come and we give you a course on hydroponics. And then after that, we can make a starter system for you, depending on your needs and your finances, of course. Okay. And then eventually we want to actually move to rural uh, lower cost uh, lower revenue areas and actually be able to empower as many people as we can by actually showing them how to grow hydroponically and sure make a living and make a living for themselves and oh. their family okay so you mentioned about uh courses uh our first to let you know if they pay for the courses and mm. the duration of the course of so right now we're just finishing up uh setting up the actual courses so we will give more information on our social media handles okay. when we are ready for the courses mm -hmm. but yes it will be a paid training program mm -hmm. where it will have different stages if you want just a one day or if you want a few weeks or a whole course mm -hmm. you can decide which one you want so we will let the viewers you know as soon as we are ready and have the proper structure ready for them oh okay that's that's really interesting so how about uh your markets uh it seems like a well-marketed organization so <laughs> how do you market your products so we've also got a, a marketing team not so big yet but then we've got a team of uh, people who do our marketing on social media and yeah uh, the brand awareness for okay. various shops so right now with markets we supply various supermarkets like uh, bon marches yeah. uh, and also restaurants okay. like a couple of restaurants we supply in uh, in harare uh, so that means that uh, we're actually getting our name out there by having it in the supermarket. Okay. So one of the other things that we believe will market our produce even better mm -hmm. is the flavor. The flavor, of course. Yes, yeah. so obviously sometimes you have to let your produce speak for itself, <laughs> So which is what we do. We believe that our yeah. produce tastes better and healthier than soil-grown produce. Okay. So when we do supply various places, we've gotten very positive feedback from customers okay. and that just makes us uh, want to drive forward and make a bigger impact oh. on, on society. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Keith mm. and your team for enlightening us on your mm. hydroponics uh, production. Mm. So, viewers, I hope you have learned a lot from Mr. Keith. So, stay tuned for our segment where we'll be adding more light to the hydroponics production. Hello, Zimbabwe. Welcome to our second segment of Farming 263. As you have seen from the first segment, who is the kid who is doing urban farming, that is hydroponics. So here I'm joined by agriculture experts in making. We have to hear what they have for us. So my first question is going to be directed to our environmentalist. So what are the benefits of hydroponics on the environment? Uh, thank you so much for the question. My name is Prinos Tumoma. I'm doing environmental protection, technology and design. Uh, so the advantages of hydroponic test is uh, there is no soil erosion since it's a soilless uh, method. Uh, and also there is less slim degradation since uh, this method is just done on one piece of land. And also there is no leaching, which means when there is no leaching, there is no contamination of underground water, meaning to be stuff uh, for us also to use. So we have heard from our environmentalist the advantages of hydroponics. So my second question is now directed to our activists. Can you give us a comment on hydroponics? <laughs> Thank you, Dida. Um, my name is Wisdom Zerebani. Um, I'm a fourth year student studying agronomy. So um, you get to a point where you realize that in your hydroponic systems, you, what you need to do since we've eliminated, so you, we've eliminated a number of diseases. So what you need to do is uh, pay uh, particular attention to your nutrient solution, the temperature of your nutrient solution, the pH of your nutrient solution, the electrical conductivity in your nutrient solution. That is what determines nutrient availability to your crop. So um, what a farmer needs to do is uh, pay attention to calibration because that is what uh, determines how your crop is going to respond to whatever fertilizer or 
Newton solution is inside uh, your solution. So basically what you need to do is pay attention to calibration. Mm, give it time. If you need to calibrate every time that you get into that you get in and you have to put in new solution then you do that and um, what you need to do is uh, recognize the fact that there is a control on the side this is uh, a nutrient solution with uh, known figures known units there there's a uh, you know the pH and you know this is the, the particular EC electrical conductivity that you need for this particular solution so what you do is um, using this and uh, other apparatus that you find in, in the greenhouse like your thermometers you pay attention to water temperature and humidity as well because this is uh, important all these fluctuations they will determine your nutrient availability which ultimately determines the yield of your project so you need to pay particular attention to these things here. Thank you, Dad. I think we have heard from our agronomists. Thank you very much. So my last question is now directed to our agriculture economists. What are the economic benefits of doing hydroponics as compared to our traditional ways that we are used to? Thank you, Daydream. My name is Vanessa Ktama. I'm studying agricultural economics. So as we can see, some of the economic benefits through hydroponics are that there is less intensive labor due to automated controls. As we saw when we visited Mr. Kip, we saw that there was a maximum of at least two people who were working inside. Also, urban food production cuts down transport costs. So since it's close to the market. I hope you guys have learned a lot from the from our panelists. I want to thank you guys for being there. And also I want to thank our biggest sponsor that is ASN. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you have any questions or comments, always comment below, even from our previous episodes. We are there to cater. Thank you very much.